I'm here with Xander from uh, Cryptic Shift. Welcome. Nice right. to see you and welcome to Wales. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Um, so let's start with, um, you've been in the band from, from the start. I have, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for those that don't know Cryptic Shift, give us a little potted history of uh, how you formed and how you got together. Yeah, I can give you a little fly-by. So um, basically started by me and Ryan back in 2013-14. Yeah. Uh, went through a couple of guitarists, uh, namely Henry Parker who played on Beyond the Celestial Realms and Joe Bradley who played on yeah. Visitation yeah. the album, but now we've got Josh Farrington on guitar. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Ryan has been in the band for a long time as well, he's on bass yep. and uh, here we are today really. Brilliant. And if someone that's not listened to your music, mm-hmm. this is probably the million dollar question, how would you actually describe it? Because technical death metal doesn't do it justice. Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like a auditory, like soundtrack to a, like a really brutal sci-fi film. Yeah. Like especially in like the composition, that's it's probably got more in, more uh, in common with that, with like the dynamics of how the music goes. So yeah. We're really into like sci-fi and Star Wars and things like uh-huh. Tom Williams. So yeah. It kind of goes to like movements and the dynamics. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah, it's like tech, tech death, tech thrash, but with that sci-fi narrative edge. Yeah, sure. And what about your influences? Because you're vocalist and guitarist. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the the key influences when you were getting into music that's influenced you to play the way that you do? Um, the bass influences you like Megadeth and this and yeah. like. Um, but then maybe around 2015, 20, 2014, I was really getting into like the more underground stuff. Yeah. So I was a really big fan of Vector there, like yeah, sci-fi yeah. thing, yeah. Uh, Revocation. I love them. They're really into like music theory. Mm-hmm. Now that music theory had to look all like the strange chords and making them work with the solos and things. Yeah. And then also like a lot of underground death metal that just been popping up last few years, like the Philist and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Great, great. And um, you put your first, you had a, a couple of singles and a split EP when you first got your music out. How important was it for you as a, a band to get some, some actual physical stuff and some, some tracks out and recorded? Was that the, the first ambition to get some stuff down? Uh, back at the beginning? Yeah, yeah, back, you know, like, um, what was your first one? Was it Dust Bowl, was it? Was that right? And then you did the yeah, split yeah. Beast of Invasion and that kind of thing. Yeah, so that stuff was just trying to get some out there. Yeah. Just so... Because, uh, yeah, you sometimes see bands live and they don't have any music out. And, yeah. You know, you don't have all to say for yourself, but, yeah, yeah, it is important to get something out there. And then and then Beyond the Sessor Realms was, like, yeah. working towards something, like, more substantial and yeah. more, like, representative. Of- uh-huh. Sure. Let's talk about the uh, the last album, Visitations, yeah, which has um, been out for over a year now, which is uh, quite a thing when you haven't been able to tour it and stuff. But... Um, Tell me about how you um, got that together, because obviously it was released in May of last year, so obviously it was written and, I assume, mostly recorded, if not completely recorded, before lockdown. Yeah, last May we recorded, so it's been like a year and a half it's been out, so it's weird, it's like the tour cycle sort yeah, of starts yeah. now, so it's all backlogged a bit, but um, so yeah, that one's been under construction really, there's a few risks that date back to like 2014, 15 and things. Right, okay. Uh, you know the single Cosmic Dreams from yeah, 2017? Yeah. So that was like the first part of this like sci-fi saga that we're yeah. doing, yeah. like the the story. Yeah. And um, it was it's just been slowly like boiling as that this visitation album. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we, we were we played a couple of the tracks live even back in like 2018. Yeah, yeah. So um, we were just refining that, and yeah, it was recorded in 2018 and parts of 2019 as well. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we've been sitting on it for a while. And, and was it a conscious decision? Did you have it ready to go? Was it decision to put it out in May, even though it was locked down? Was that decision to put it out before lockdown? Was that the, the release date? Yeah, I think we locked in the release date before. Yeah. It was uh, May the 4th, you know, Star Wars, May the 4th. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we, we were locked on that. That, yeah. that just had to happen. But <laughs> pandemic came around. And I think, l- luckily for us, it, it kind of worked in our favour with uh, it was quite early in the pandemic. And yeah. a lot of people were just getting used to it being sat at home and they had a lot of time to listen to things. And Yeah, sure. So not many bands open with a 25-minute track. Yeah. So um, that's obviously deliberate. Mm-hmm. But... Um, Tell me about how you decided that you were going to do a 25-minute track. Was that did it just evolve, or it, it just happened that way? Really, the first part of the story, uh, 
was just the sequence of events that yeah. was just going to go together yeah. as, as it was like the first part of the, the character's journey uh-huh. um, it, it kind of follows so Cosmic Dreams ends and Moonbelt Immolator is like up to track two, Hyper Dream Gal. That's when he yeah. sort of realises he has a purpose and he knows yeah. the direction he's going. But Moonbelt is just aimless, wandering through all these scenarios and events. Yeah. And it, it just happened to be sure, the sure. most suited events it was. And uh, yeah, just, it just evolved that way and uh, yeah. 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a brilliant track. I mean, I mean obviously. Um, you need to sit there and listen to it in its entirety and, and listen to the album in full, I think. It's, yeah, it's yeah. not something you can just put on and put off, is it? Yeah, it's a little bit of a slow burn. Yeah. With the atmospheric <laughs> and sci-fi stuff at the beginning, that's like meant to capture your attention rather than like bursting with like a yeah. you know, riff or something. Yeah, sure. And you've, you've got the um, Metal Blade now. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so that must have been... How did that come about? How, was, uh, how did you find out about that? Uh, they got in touch. Yeah. And they really liked our stuff. Uh, yeah. We obviously really like their stuff, and it's uh, yeah, it's working out great yeah. so far. Brilliant. So you've changed guitarist. Yeah. Um, so Joe played on Visitations, and now you've got Joss, mm-hmm. who's in Separation, wasn't he? So yeah, awesome yeah. band. Yeah. yeah. Well, we know him down here, because only across the bridge yeah. in Bristol. Um, when did you actually change guitarists? Because Visitations had come out. Had you changed guitarists before Visitations came out? Yeah. So yeah. Joe. Uh, told us he was going to leave end of 2019. Right. It was about, I think we were, we were playing with Alan Penance in uh, November. Yeah. Point. Yeah, he was having a child and, yeah. you know, things, so he decided to leave and uh, we'd had Joss in mind and basically immediately and we asked him if he was up for it, so by January 20, 2020, yeah. he jammed with us and he'd learned the set and we'd, we actually performed one show with him right. in January okay. with uh, Cannabis Corps in London. Ah, right. Okay, so you actually managed to play one show before. Yeah. So he was, Joss was part of the band before the album even came out, right. even though Joe okay. played the So even though he's in Brist- he was in Bristol, he's now in Leeds as well, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. looking at it thinking, how the hell is someone in Bristol working with someone in Leeds? But obviously he's up there with you, so yeah, it's so, a bit easier. Yeah. And John being from Liverpool, uh, he yeah. was in Liverpool for a while, in Manchester for a couple of years, but now John and Joss uh, we're all in Leeds now we've yeah. got our own practice spot so it's, it's really Brilliant. Hard, it's awesome. great so live shows this is the third third show is that right Manchester yeah. North yeah. yeah third one yeah how's it been it's been awesome yeah it's been really cool to get back yeah we had a couple of shows with our other band Slime Lord as well ah right just okay, before yeah. yeah yeah. and Manchester we did like double duties yeah which was, uh, pretty weird like playing with Slime Lord and then switching mindsets to jump in with like the first show of Cryptic yeah absolutely but, uh, it's, it's been awesome yeah uh, it's been yeah it's been awesome I was, I was looking at your tour dates and it's it's mad the where, where you're going yeah I mean where are you going tomorrow Derby then up to Newcastle Edinburgh Leeds London and Nottingham so doing a bit of a zigzag but there's no like Major, we're not doing like London to Edinburgh, which we have yeah. done before, but yeah. yeah, Max drives like four or five hours, which is all right. You, know? you can manage that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and how do you, for someone that doesn't know, how do you plan that? Is it just when the vacancies are available in the venues that you try and fit it in? Well, we know that we've got a great following in London, yeah, and our home time is, home time is Leeds, yeah. So those ones were like we were like right Saturday and Friday and Saturday, yeah. So they're, they're probably going to be the great shows, we want to make sure they're great, mm-hmm. and then uh, the rest is like we just get in touch with the people you know. Edinburgh's always been really cool, for us. yeah. So we just figure out what dates for you and all that, yeah. yeah, sure. And is this your first time in Wales? No, not not as a person, but to play. We've, we've played this, this venue once before, I think it was an incineration fest. Okay. Maybe right. maybe that was twenty sixteen or seventeen. Yeah. Okay. And sure. we've also played in somewhere called Neath. Oh yeah. A bit further west. Yeah. Yeah, it was right in like, right in the country. <laughs> cool. So you've got your own room to rehearse. Does that make it a lot easier? Yeah, it is, yeah. it's really awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything's all set up. We've got the banner and everything. It's, it's just really cool, like uh, workstation to, to like get your head right in the mindset. And Brilliant. Because obviously um, you talk to a lot of bands certainly over the last 18 months and they've hardly been able to get together let alone rehearse and yeah we've, we've been pretty adamant in make sure we can practice and yeah so Joss and Joss has only just moved to Leeds uh, yeah. to start this year but up until then he was getting a coach like multiple, yeah. multiple times a week so. right okay yeah. dedication yeah it's awesome to have a really dedicated friend 
Brilliant. So you've also got um, Damnation Festival coming up, yeah, yeah. which should be amazing this year because it's uh, apart from the fact it's sold out. Obviously, it's another hometown gig for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We've, so we've been going to Damnation as, as, as fans for a while, so it's yeah. really cool. What's your uh, view on the change of venue for next year? Then? Yeah, whatever. If, if that's what they need to do yeah. to accommodate their business model, then that's awesome. You know, they're always way selling out the tickets. You know, a lot of people want them, so it makes sense. Then. Yeah, it was astonishing this year, wasn't it? You know, the, how quickly they sold out. And, yeah, amazing. Um, when I was looking, doing a bit of research for you, um, I was going through Setlist FM, and yeah. on, the, on the list of your early gigs is Maguire's Pizza Bar in Liverpool yeah, in we, 2016. We there, yeah. yeah. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's literally a pizza bar and it's got a yeah. venue in the back. Oh, it's got a venue in the back. Yeah, it? and uh, Jeff Walker from Carcass was eating a pizza. Really? On that day, yeah. Oh my god, that must have been amazing. Yeah. Apparently, he's always popping in there. You know. Yeah. And uh, John, our base, has been from Liverpool. He's, he's quite used to it, just he's seeing the Carcass guy. In there. Yeah. <laughs> That's fabulous. Yeah. I was looking at it thinking, I've heard of bands playing in some strange venues, but I had visions of you in like the Domino's with everyone sat around eating the pizza and going, what the hell is this? You know? yeah. <laughs> I haven't tried a pizza from there. But... Yeah. So I was also looking at um, going back to your Facebook and stuff, and you had that little merch figure, the Amnesiac, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And I think you made about 20 of them, is that right? Yeah, it was about 25. Yeah. Really real limited, yeah. So that's quite obscure merchandising. It is, yeah. So yeah, we put it up for the order and yeah. there's, there's 20 diehard fans <laughs> who have one sitting on the shelf somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's next in the obscure uh, obscure merchandise list? Well, w- when the next record comes out, we would definitely want to get a, an action figure of that character. Yeah. Well. It's going to be like a different character for the next album. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, in regards to more weird merch stuff, uh, I'll have to see. I don't know. Can you get? Can you match the Legion of the Damned cheese knife set, which was one of my <laughs> favourites that I saw once. I can never find it. It was, it was amazing. So what's... Um, Obviously, you've got Damnation, you've got the rest of this tour. You mm-hmm. talked about the next record, which suggests that you've already started writing and everything else. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a similar deal. Uh, a lot of like, the concepts in it, yeah. if, even a few of the riffs were like, years and years old because uh-huh. it's, it's all about the same concepts and it sort of runs side by side with yeah. the presentations. Um, so, yeah, we've started really starting to piece that together in the last few months. And is it a concept that you think you can, you can just keep running, yeah? Uh, it's got a beginning yeah. and it's got an end. Yeah. Um, as uh, Mr. Smith says from The Matrix. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. So um, you obviously attract quite a wide range of fans. You can see tonight there's, there's varied fans. Is there, is there a, a standard cryptic shift fan? Um, I, they, get, I, guess, like I guess some of, um, some of the more quiet heads yeah. that are like, lingering in the back on their own and yeah. uh, they'll pop up to the merch stall and and it turns out they'll be like really into us and you know asking like obscure questions and things yeah, you know, yeah. but we, we have a lot of friends as well into us but yeah I think the, the secret nerds who love <laughs> Star Wars or something you know, or, or really into like music theory and things yeah. there, like the diad sure. and you've also got I think you've got um, what's it called hallucination from Enceladus to a, with bedsore plans is that yeah. right and is, is that European or yeah it's European it was supposed to be right now I think yeah. the pushback obviously we're hoping it's going to go ahead it's, it's now in I think it's in May right okay so May. fingers crossed really yeah. hopefully Europe will be ready by then yeah yeah, sure. yeah bedsore put out an awesome record yeah. hallucinating uh, I can't quite remember it. It was very good though. Brilliant, brilliant. So, where can people find information about Cryptic Ship? Do the, do the plug. Facebook or Instagram is the yep. usual, yeah. And all the music is on Spotify and the. It's on Spotify or, or Bandcamp, like yeah. that, on Blood Harvest site as well. And ideally, that's where people should be picking it up. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. We'll have some more uh, presses of the vinyl coming up yeah. and uh, CDs as well. We've got a two disc CD coming soon, which Great. is uh, it's, it's going to have a second disc called Pleasure of Plasma, yeah. which is like a homage to Morbid Angel's Love of Lava. It's going to have all the isolated guitar solos on, all the individual. Wow. The end as well, which are like inserts into the story as well. So that'll be for the real people at the back, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for uh, your time, Xander. Yeah, awesome. Animation. Thanks for listening. 
make sure you keep up to date with future episodes by subscribing to our channels. For more information on this podcast, or for all the latest music news, reviews, interviews and more, head over to our website www.theraziseedge.rocks. <laughs>